Do you feel like you're being tossed around like waves in the ocean? Yeah, and I feel like if you turn on the news, America is in that state right now. There's a world of confusion, specifically looking at gender identity, gender confusion, Mm -hmm. self-worship, lots of lies out there. Let's shine the light of Jesus' truth on it today. Come and join us. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Becoming Branches. My name's Adam Cook. With me, always, Pastor Dustin McKinney. And have you ever read As Sure as the Dawn? I sure haven't. We've been talking about strongholds. We've been talking about some some awesome stuff, challenging stuff. I know we're talking about some serious stuff, so I kind of wanted to break. You know the icebreaker ships that kind of... My ice is broken. But tell me, uh, so As Sure as the Dawn, what's... uh, the just, only th- you just never read it and you want to put The it only up. thing I know is I'm going to see if the camera can get this. Look at this guy's epic rock in the back party on the back of this hairdo. <laughs> and the baby is eating the blanket. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's all I know. As sure as the dawn. Check it out. I've never read it. Me neither. Adam's never read it. No. But we're going to promote it. <laughs> Absolutely. Because uh, literature is good. Literature is good. Reading is good. It's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of loosey goosey because we're wrapping up the series on strongholds. And guys, it's been it's been a lot of uh, deep topics, mm-hmm. man. Sexual strongholds, pornography, generational strongholds. Yeah. Uh, last week, uh, you you really deep dived into that. I'm, I'm so excited. Deep dived. Deep dived. Is that is that deep divin? Is it's that been deep divin? Deep dove. Deep dove. I went well in third grade, but up until then, I taught my <laughs> own self. <laughs> What are we getting into, brother? Uh, so I thought we could wrap up this week. Like I said, we talked about the generational strongholds, and that kind of leads into, you know, the larger family into the larger culture. And so we're going to talk about some cultural strongholds. There's uh, only a few. Only a few. Yeah. And honestly, when I think about it, and we'll go into some specific things, but really when I think about it, it's this, it's this worship of self. Mm-hmm. Really, that's what it comes down to is I've rejected God's way Mm -hmm. because I want it my way. I have to boil it down. That's right. Um, But to get more specific, you know, what are some things as you look at society, you look at the news, these types of things, what are things that are grabbing the attention of American citizens uh, today? Wow. We got to start with simplistic things like pronouns, Mm -hmm. gender ideas, gender confusion. What Mm -hmm. I thought was straightforward stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, in today's culture is is a huge topic of confusion. Yeah. Um, and I think that is a major, you want to talk about a stronghold on our younger generation today? Let's start mm-hmm. there. And my gosh, uh, artists today, uh, music artists, and they're promoting and, and uh, acknowledging, uh, quite frankly, insanity. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one topic. What about you? What, what grabs? That's just well, the first comes to the, the front of my brain. Yeah, I think that's the hot topic uh, in churches. I guess the hot topic, you know, Christian schools are mm-hmm. trying to determine you know, enrollment uh, type of language, you know, uh, because this is, this is out in the forefront of the news media. It's in the mm-hmm. forefront of social media, all social media, all of these different things. And so let's talk about it. Sure. Let's talk about it because like anything, and pastor brought up again this morning, we cannot base morality and truth on our feelings, you know, because I'll be honest, man, it would be so much simpler if God was like, you can be whatever gender you want. Because now I have nothing to, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. It's easy peasy, easy going. Mm-hmm. But sin has consequences. There would be consequences for that. But living in God's truth sets us free. And it's a much better life. And so you hit the right word. You said confusion. Because mm-hmm. right now there's just a lot of confusion. A lot of young people are being told, or they're being affirmed mm-hmm. to make transitions. Mm-hmm. Um but they're not hearing a lot of the other side of the story mm-hmm. of a lot of people who have made transitions are like, mm-hmm. this is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. And the, the, the you're absolutely correct. And the problem is, one of the problems is they do such mm-hmm. drastic changes. We're not talking mm-hmm. little changes, cosmetic mm-hmm. changes. We're talking drastic physical alterations mm-hmm. that are irreversible. Mm-hmm. And then when they realize, oh my gosh, this is, this is, yes, a fad, but I, I did something maybe because of a fad or peer pressure. I wanted to be the in crowd. And all of a sudden, they're in the mirror and they're like, oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's major. It's not just little yeah. changes here. I mean, yeah. we're talking huge changes. Yeah. 
So we want to approach this episode in a couple of ways. One, we want to approach it with um, humility and a spirit of gentleness, Mm -hmm. um, because we know there may be listeners out there who struggle with gender um, confusion, Mm -hmm. gender identity, um, and or something that this is right now being exposed to the first time as a thing that's potentially bad. Like I've always been told this is good, Mm -hmm. Um, and so. Uh, we do not have it all together. If you're a, if you're a watcher of the show, you already know this. Uh, we have our own struggles, um, but we also want to face it uh, with truth. And so I'm not. I'm, I don't want to sit here and affirm uh, a, a gender uh, transition, for example, when I know that that's not the truth. That's not the best thing that God has for you. And so we're going to do a gentleness. If you take a look at Jesus's ministry, when he rebuked somebody, typically with somebody. Uh, who knew better, who knew the word, who knew the truth, and then tried to lead others away into darkness. That's when Jesus gave a, a strong rebuke. Um, but outside of that, people who were living in sin and living in darkness, he treated with compassion mm-hmm. uh, and very gently. And what I will say, even his rebuke to the Pharisees was compassion mm-hmm. uh, because they needed a stern warning and a stern rebuke to turn away from where they're going. So, so the first thing I want to look at is we believe God's word to be true, mm-hmm. right? And we believe that God is the creator God, Yeah. all right? Um, you know, uh, uh, Elohim, God creator, he is the creator and sustainer of life. And so people who are struggling with gender identity, the truth is that God has designed you to be a specific gender. The gender that you were born with is what our God and his all of his wisdom and all of his knowledge has chosen for the best life to make you that gender. So would you agree with me thus far? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it, because if you don't, a lot of people are already skewed when they don't have the basis and the concrete foundation of the morals of the Word of God. Right, exactly. So, so And so if I, if I don't believe the Bible to be God's truth, well, of course I'm going to be confused because mm-hmm. uh, now truth is relative and morality mm-hmm. is relative. Um, but we believe that morality is firm because uh, God's word speaks to certain issues. And he tells us that he created man and and woman, yep. ma- male and female. Yep. And so when I decide, again, we talked about this worship of self, which we typically are all guilty of. Yep. When I decide that I'm going to reject God's design and plan for my life, and I'm now going to do the thing that I want to do because I believe that it's going to be satisfac- more satis- um, satisfying. My life is going to be better. Again, we've talked about with the sexual strongholds, mm-hmm. the lies we believe. Again, this is another example that I believe the lie that my life is going to be more satisfying by getting the, the immediate satisfaction or gratification of the desire of the flesh to get what I want right now. Yep. Instead of knowing that if I continue to walk in the obedience of Christ, even when it's difficult, I will experience joy and freedom. Uh, so, Adam, have you heard of the detransitioner movement? I have. All right. Yes, so, have. What, have, what have you heard? What's it about? Well, I, I, I don't want to give too many shout outs, but the, Matt Walsh, who is an online personality for a company called The Daily Wire, he came out with a, a documentary called What is a Woman? Mm-hmm. And within that series was exactly that. Um, it was... Um, a woman who transitioned to a man Mm -hmm. and after the fact was like, Oh my gosh, have Mm -hmm. I made a huge mistake? I was lied to. This isn't what they said it was going to be. This isn't happiness. Mm -hmm. This is mutilation. And I'm, and now I'm trying to go back if you can, because like I said earlier, once you make some surgeries and once you do things, Mm -hmm. not as easy, but yeah, it was a whole documentary on this. And I, uh, it was, it was, Super informative. And that's one story. There are literally thousands of stories like this, but you won't see it in mainstream media. So what is happening is basically people's bodies who have gone through some type of gender reassignment surgery or have taken pills to depress certain natural hormones, their bodies are like turning on themselves uh, and are having uh, major health issues and major health complications um, because they have rejected God's design um, for their body. And, and when you look at God's word, we're like, well, yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. you've, you've taken away natural hormones. You've taken away God's design for how the body's supposed to work. And you're trying to now form what was in God's image into your own image. And God knows your body better than you do. Yeah. 
Um, needed you in your mother's womb. He needed you in your mother's womb. Even, you know, God tells us that he knew us even before then. He knew about our lives, that our day, that our days have been ordained. Yep. And so when I think about this, my first thought is, is pity that I have, I've either bought into these lies or I've bought into my feelings um, and it's blinded me so far to the truth that I would actually undergo surgery to have, like you mentioned, some of these surgeries that are permanent mm-hmm. that cannot go back and be redone um, because I, I believe this lie. And so uh, I take a look at God's word and what always amazes me is that he is so full of grace. Yes. He is so full of grace, but we have to humble ourselves to receive that grace. I, I read a scripture this morning in James that God opposes the proud, but yep. gives grace or shows favor to the humble. And so this is my this is my opinion, but when you say to God, I don't accept your creation of my body, and I'm going to supplant it with my own creation, really an idol. Mm-hmm. I would say that is a form of pride. Um, <laughs> it tends to be an easy one to, to point out. But I say, again, we're all guilty of this in different aspects of our life. But when you're talking about your physical body um, and you make that type of bold action to, 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 to reject God's design, to put your own design in place, you can't expect that to be blessed. Because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, if you've been in a situation where you've already gone under the knife, you've made the transition, um, his grace is sufficient. Forgiveness is always uh, held in the in the arms of Jesus. And so you are not past forgiveness. You are not past saving. God is so incredibly good and patient. And you're not past God using you where Amen. you're at. Amen. Amen. Because you think, oh, you don't understand. I've done X, Y, and Z. Well, God needs someone who did X, Y, and Z and mm-hmm. needs to talk to other people. And I'm telling you, we've talked about this in this whole series of God can and will use you where you're at. Yeah. God will use everything. Uh, and a lot of people, I just want to touch on it. They think that the the uh, the the LGBT or homosexuality is is this elevated thing of, of sin. Sin is sin. Mm-hmm. We have all mm-hmm. this. All, all means short. everything. We have all fallen short. So I know a lot of people when they view Christianity, they're like, oh well, they hate homosexuality, but though this, you know, lying and she, no, it, we are mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. sinners. We all. Yeah. Need Christ. Amen. It's not you're up here and we're down here. No, guys, mm-hmm. we all need covered by the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. And 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 again, to know that Jesus Jesus will meet you where you're at. Um, but on the other hand, too, um, to to model after Christ. And again, I'm in. I am not in any um, you know elevated position. Just as you mentioned, I struggle with my own sin. But if you are in pastoral ministry and you're watching this and you are affirming. Your congregation, yeah. that this is okay. You need to repent. Yes. You need to stop um, because you you know the truth. Um, and God's word is very clear on this. Mm. Um, it's it's. I understand the temptation because, like I mentioned earlier, it would it would actually be easier to do that. Sure. But but God doesn't call us to a life of just ease. Uh, it, the Christian life is difficult, but the hope and the joy and the fulfillment that is in Christ in, in obedience to him far outweighs any additional you know burdens that I may have to go through or hardships. Um, and oftentimes the pastor was talking this morning, Christ allows storms to come into our life to refine us and to make us more like him. Um, so another thought that I had about cultural strongholds, because we had mentioned this in an earlier episode about even demonic strongholds that are out there. Mm-hmm. And I think when... Um, when as a nation we buy into a lie uh, that is widespread, I think we start to open ourselves up to the influences of, of evil spirits, um, to Satan's um, power in this world. Now, this is not, I don't want to, I don't want to give Satan more credit than he's due, um, but the Bible does tell us that he is the prince of the power of the air, that um, his influence, he does have power and influence in this world, mm-hmm. but we also know that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Um, 
And so, and not just, you know, this, um, this gender identity issues, but I, there are things that we can do, especially if I'm an unbeliever and I don't have the Holy Spirit living in me that opens the door to spiritual realms. The Bible is very clear that, you know, we see this physical world, but there's a spiritual world that's taking place all around us and we don't see it. And that's probably an act of mercy because we would probably freak out. We wouldn't leave. <laughs> you, you couldn't even open your eyes. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Total protection from God yeah. there. So things like, and you, you've heard testimony like um, uh, drug, drug addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think there are things that can open, uh, open yourself up to influence um, from evil spirits. Um, having a seed of bitterness, having, holding, mm-hmm. holding on to bitterness for so, so long Man, that will harden your heart and and can sin retain in you exactly of unforgiveness. Yes, and it leaves you susceptible. And so, even things you know, you know, you hear stories, and I've had individuals in my life who have, who have experienced even things as far as like demon possession. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a uh, a friend in college uh, who dealt with a, a a sibling who got into uh, Wiccan um, and seances, Ouija boards, right, that type of stuff. Yeah. And but no. Praise God, that person came out of that. But the the crazy things that happened when they were trying to leave that lifestyle, man, there were there were evil spirits that were trying to get that person to stay in that that type of life. Hmm. Um, and God has given us uh, hasn't given us a spirit of fear, um, but of a sound mind. We can we can know. We have discernment through the power of the Holy Spirit when things are from God, when things are not of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I want to say is this isn't a name it, claim it. Like if you if you you can't, I wouldn't tell somebody, you know, you can just go into a place, go into a person who's demon possessed and just start naming the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden expect, boom, the, the spirit's going to be eradicated because we don't see that in Scripture. We see Jesus do that. Yeah, well, that's, and, that's a little different, right? Yeah. And we see his, when he gave specific authority to, the disciples, to yeah. disciples to go do that. We also see examples when disciples were, were not able to cast out mm-hmm. a demon. And Jesus, you know, went to them and, or they went to Jesus and they asked him, they're like, why? Because they had, they had been casting out right. demons. Like, why couldn't we do this? We, we didn't change anything. Yeah. Um, and they asked him why, and his response, you know, his first response is, well, you you had you had little faith, mm-hmm. you had little faith, and and he goes on. Now, this is one of those verses where we talk about there's a small percentage in scripture where translation comes a little yeah. bit different, and so you have like where he says through prayer, through prayer and prayer and fasting. Yeah. Um, but the but the idea here is that it's going to take a major act of faith and commitment. Um, to to help break down the stronghold. The stronghold may not necessarily break in a second or a minute. That was a loud clap. Sorry, fans. It's actually super loud to me. I don't know why. If my eyes start watering and I'm like have a concussion grenade, I'm is because he just disoriented me. Yeah, and uh, you know Acts 19, you have the sons of Skiba. Yeah, who are going around and they say, you know, but in the name of Jesus, who which Paul preaches, we command you to come out. And he's like, well, I know Paul. Mm-hmm. The demon responds, I know Paul and I know Jesus. Who are you? Yeah. And he beats them up. <laughs> um, so yeah. having having a an understanding that Satan is a real person. Demons are real. There is yeah. a spiritual force in this world and they seek to blind and confuse, which I think is why we see yeah. this cultural stronghold that we have now with gender identity. Yeah. And we can't just think we're going to go outside and say, in the name of Jesus, I break this sin of gender confusion over America. Yeah. No, it, judgment starts in the house of Israel. We need to first take a look at ourselves and say, God, what do I need to be forgiven of? What do I need to bring to you? What do I need to be repent of? And then I'm going to slowly start building relationships with people and speaking truth into lives yeah. that this is not okay. Um, I'm going to love you the entire time. I'm going to love you through it. Um, and, and to those who are speaking on behalf of Jesus and saying that this is okay to say, no, that is not, that is not right. Um, you need to stop. You need to repent. Uh, but the church can stand up and speak in these situations. But above all, accept 
people who want to repent and turn from that and to love on them and to show them there's a much better way. I think you, you nailed it. I mean, ending this series, guys, you might have people in your life. You might have a, a brother, a daughter, a cousin who who is in this. Don't harden your hearts and just Bible beat them over the head. Mm-hmm. That will not work. Guys, uh, we are we are commanded by Jesus to love mm-hmm. thy neighbor. Love does not mean acceptance of their right. lifestyle, but it does mean to pray for that individual. Jesus died for them. He has a plan for them. But you've got to become a branch mm-hmm. and uh, extend love, and and but but not acceptance. You that that mm-hmm. is so easily blurred. Right. Right. Um, this has been a fantastic series, guys. I hope this has challenged you. This has moved you. This has convicted you. This has been awesome. Yeah. Um, again, we're not perfect. We talked about. Uh, the strongholds we've had in mm-hmm. our lives. I was just thinking last night, we had a men's conference of mm-hmm. how grateful I am. Uh, I would encourage you guys to to talk to someone older than you um, for for information, an elder, maybe a, you still have a grandparent, someone at your church, an uncle, uh, someone who is seated in the word. Mm-hmm. Don't just go to Uncle Joe, who, you know, <laughs> sorry, Uncle Joe. We've been on the Uncle Joey <laughs> kick, not Uncle Dave. Cut it out. Um, and just really invest. You know, and if you're an older person who've been through this, invest. Yes, amen. So this has been this has been a great series, guys. Uh, thank you so much. We're gonna pray about the next topic. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, we have stuff on our hearts, but we're gonna pray about this and see where God leads us next. But thank you so much for being with us in the Stronghold series. See you next time.